Okay, good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. You feel very far away because this is a new setup for me and a weird ankle, but it is what it is. So I want to tell you a story. When I was 20, I was on one of the first red carpets that I had ever, you know, was ever working. And there was a, I was with two other girlfriends who were also young publicists and we thought we were on top of the world because publicists, there is some power in that. You're on the red carpet, people are screaming. They're not screaming for you, but you're controlling sort of the flow, the movement, where the celebrities go, and it, it's, it's, you feel powerful. It's all smoke and mirrors, though. There's no power there. Um, but there was an older publicist at this particular event, and she was probably 40. But in our minds, she might as well have been like Dorothy from The Golden Girls, because at 20, 40 seems like light years away. Long story short, we were obnoxious and probably not doing our jobs right, and she was tenured and seniored and probably tired of standing in those heels, probably feeling guilt-ridden that she wasn't home to put her children to bed, probably going through whatever with her husband, but what did we know? We were 20 and we didn't have any of those concerns. And certainly couldn't even fast forward our brain enough to think about what a 40 year old on the carpet at, you know, 7.30 at night, the celebrities are two hours late showing up, you know, we knew, all knew we were gonna be there all night long. We didn't know, we don't know what that feels like to feel like you wanna be home with your kids, but you're at work, we're, we're 20 years old, we're so happy to be here. That's not the point. The point is this, we were young and obnoxious and and she, we, she was frustrated with our probably everything, but I think at this moment, our lack of focus on the carpet, she was trying to run the carpet, it was her carpet, and we were like all over the place, just kids. Ugh, I now, the publicist Jamie now would have zero patience for that, Jamie. I would've been like, you, off my carpet, you're annoying, which is basically what she tried to do. What we did then was exactly what you would expect from three immature, obnoxious girls. We uh, said things like, relax, grandma. We're not curing cancer, it's a red carpet. Um, and, you know, snide comments like that. I think about things like this sometimes and it legit, I gotta bring you closer for this. It legit makes me sick. Now I understand, I don't beat myself up because I, I have grown so far from that. But the lesson for me is every time I think about the way I feel, when I go back to that, it helps me now. How many times does something happen in my life now where I want to use my mouth as a weapon? It, I am legendary for it. Ask anybody from Freehold, they will tell you. Nobody is, fa I, nobody is faster with their mouth with hurtful things than me. If, if this was the wild, wild west, and we had duels, I would win with my mouth. I can cut somebody down, I can size them up and go right for their jugular. And it scares me sometimes because sometimes when I feel backed into a corner or I feel insecure, I want to cut someone down. I want to trim the fat. And the fastest way for me to do that is through insults because there is really nobody better than me. I, it, is, it is a sickness, honestly. The biggest lie we are told as children, which is why I never say it to my kids, is sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me. That is bullshit. Words do so much damage to people. Not only to the people you say them to, but the people who say them, because I am here to tell you 
that 20 years, almost 20 years later, I think about the things I said to that woman on the carpet. And, I, and it makes me sick. I, it, 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 it infuriates me. Now, when I was 17 and I was angry and I was hurting, I get it. It was a defense for me. It was the way I deflected pain from myself and put it on others. But now at 38, there are still times where I come up with such a creative way to cut someone down to size and I want so badly to show people I can still flex that muscle. I want to remind them, don't mess with me, mess with the bull, you get the horns. And every once in a while I slip back into it, man, and I and I and I get so angry at myself. But more often than not, I go, Jamie, you've got nothing to prove. You know who you are, and that is here's the tr here's the best thing. You know who you are, what you're capable of, but that is not even who you want to be anymore. You don't want to be the person that can do that. So where is the celebration in that? You have nothing to prove. Some people take my silence as a sign of weakness. Oh, Jamie and her friend from the show had a big falling out and this one went on a tangent and this one never said anything. Maybe Jamie's weak, maybe she's wrong. I go, maybe Jamie just decided she doesn't want to be the person who tears someone else to shreds anymore. Because I, you live in the energy you create. You live in that space. I'm raising children in my energy. So if I am the person using my mouth as a weapon, then my children are constantly around a loaded weapon. Would you live your, leave your kids around a loaded weapon? I don't think so. And what lesson am I teaching them? It's funny. Yesterday, I said to Olivia, she asked me what loyalty meant. We were talking about it. And I said to her, if someone was being mean to Charlie, would you step in front of Charlie and say, don't, don't be mean to my sister. You need to back up. You know, I did the Jamie thing. And Olivia goes, well, I wouldn't do all that, what you're doing, because I'm shy and that all looks ridiculous. But I would tell Charlie to walk away. And I was like, what? What? What just happened? <laughs> and Michael was cracking up and I thought no Jamie don't get upset she, this is who you want her to be at first I was like no that you're weak don't you don't tell her to what 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 and then no this is what you're working towards remember sometimes in this country we take free speech a little too seriously and that we think we can say whatever we want about people too whoever we want, whatever we want to whoever we want. We want to cut people down to size and we want to tell their business and we want to put them on blast and all of these things. But let me tell you something, you live in the energy you create. And it is a dangerous thing to walk around with a loaded weapon all the time. I know I did it for over 10 years. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will hurt forever. And that is the truth. Think before you speak. I love you today. Have a great day.